Hey everyone, Hannah here for uh, Women's Studies 392 Sexuality. So this week we're covering Michel Foucault's work and specifically we're looking at politics of self and disciplinary society. And so um, for our purposes and the e-reader, you're really focusing in on Foucault's work as it relates to genders and sexualities. But Foucault also is a prolific writer and theorist when it comes to uh, discipline and punish. And in fact, most criminologists will cite that work by him. And so um, <clears throat> I want to think about how those two aspects of his body of work sort of connect. And so um, and in a nutshell, um, Foucault is basically saying that we the way that power, in particular as it relates to discipline and punish, the way that it operates within social institutions um, is perhaps a, le a little less obvious than what a traditional theorist would, would say. And so instead of thinking about having an authoritative figure at the top of a social institution who's sort of running things and being very domineering about what the rules are and what's considered so socially acceptable behavior and what's not socially acceptable, Michel Foucault would say it's more complex than that because there are different ways that we self-regulate ourselves based on how we perceive societal rules and what's considered okay and acceptable behavior and what's not. And so we don't need an actual authoritative figure in front of us to tell us, no, don't do this thing that's inappropriate or perhaps illegal. We can simply know through social cues that something is wrong or bad and we'll self-regulate ourselves. Um, the idea being that there could be someone watching us or there could be someone who could swoop in and say, oh, your behavior is wrong. So we as individuals are going to self-regulate to ensure that that doesn't happen. And so um, you'll hear Foucault often referred to as a post-structuralist theorist because we're moving beyond social institutions as mere um, structures and these top-down uh, power structures and we're thinking about how power operates in our everyday lives and how we contribute to that as members of our society. So that is a nutshell version of Michel Foucault's work and contribution to ideas about discipline and punish, uh, punishment and criminology. But to sort of mesh that with what we're learning about this week with sexualities and genders, uh, we also know that in our Western societies, there is a lot of um, topics that are taboo or considered uh, wrong in square quotes or bad in square quote, quotes that has to do with genders and sexualities. And so you might not necessarily have authoritative figures standing around you constantly saying um, X type of genders or sexualities is bad, right? But there are social cues that indicate this is true, this is the case. And so we then self-regulate to express our sexualities and our genders in a socially acceptable Western way. So think about what that means. Um, also be thinking about, you know, in the 21st century, we have so many options when it comes to labeling our genders and our sexualities. And for uh, mainstream society, that's often perceived as a victory, as um, uh, giving folks access to more options and choices, and that's progressive and it's, quote, good. But Michel Foucault would say it's more complicated than that, right? Because um, by having these options, what purpose does that serve or whose agenda does that perpetuate? And it's very steeped in Western exceptionalism and this idea that in the West, we give people so many options for identifying genders and sexualities, and that makes us progressive. And in a binary sense of there's either progressive societies or 
backward societies, non-progressive societies, and developing countries, they don't have all of these options that we do in the West, and so they must be backward. And it creates this binary of um, Westernism is good, Western society is good, it's progressive, um, non-Western, often developing countries are backward and they're bad because they don't have these options. But in reality, we know with um, settler colonialism, in fact, Western societies have been limiting choices around how genders and sexualities are understood and perceived for centuries. And so how does this socio-political historical context shape how we understand genders and sexualities and also how we understand what's good or bad or deviant. And so keep all of that in mind as you work through week two material. I'm always available if you have any questions or comments. And uh, my expectation is that everyone has the Wil the Ricky Wilchins reader and that you'll be able to do um, the, the readings that are assigned for week two and you'll be able to do discussion board too. But if that's not the case, please contact me and email me as soon as possible. Um, also, don't forget your reflection paper is due Friday at 11.55 p.m. So keep that in mind. And I just noticed that the class schedule says reflection paper two is due week two, but it's actually reflection paper one that's due Friday. So apologies for the typo, but it is accurate that your first short paper, your reflection paper is due this coming Friday at 11.55 p.m. All right. Have a great week. Bye, everyone.